How's it going? Matt McNeil coming to you from the garage. Uh, I am working on another one of these Dream Girl, um, I guess I'm calling them Scream Queens, but it's a tribute to a Be Something Studios mask that I was enamored with as a kid that my parents wouldn't let me have. <laughs> so uh, now that I make masks occasionally, and I figured that I would do a tribute. I've already done one of these. And there's been a lot of people saying that they're really interested in it, so I'm doing another. And uh, I just wanted to show you where I am in the process on this one in particular, because I don't think I did very much in regard to the middle stages of um, this mask when uh, I did the first one, because quite frankly, I didn't know that it was going to turn out to be anything um, great. Sometimes you know that it's going to be good, and sometimes you don't. So... Uh, yeah, but anyway, the first one turned out really well, like so well that uh, I really kind of want to keep it. <laughs> but I probably will take it to Mask Fest along with this one so that I'll have two copies of this uh, mask. But uh, rest assured, if you are interested in one of these, there are not going to be many because it's a lot of work. Um, but there will be a few, maybe five total. Um, I'm not going to take five, but I'll take, uh, you know, these two. And if somebody wants to... Uh, talk to me about getting one, then we'll, we'll we can build you one um, up to maybe five or ten. I don't I don't I don't want to put a number on it, but it, there certainly won't be twenty or fifty of these because, <laughs> uh, like I say, there's a lot to to go on with this. So uh, this is where I am on this one. As you can see, I'm kind of kind of in the middle with it, uh, sort of feeling this one out, um, and I just wanted to talk about the pieces and parts that are required uh, in order to do this now. Waste not, want not. I take several molds that I already have and I kind of kit bash them together. And that's sort of what makes these great and unique and special is that no two will ever be the same. Um, and um, this one is sort of mid paint, mid latex, mid goo, mid muscle, mid fat, mid tongue. <laughs> we're, we're, we're like halfway through the process. So anyway, I just figured I would uh, come on and, and show you what's going on here. Um, so if, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, multiple molds in order to create a single mask, this mask is, and when I say mask, these are not really wearable. I guess you could probably make this wearable if it were uh, glued to a sock and you made a sock mask out of it. You could probably make a half mask that would would work in that regard. But um, in my sort of mask making journey, I found that most collectors eventually only really want stuff that is foam filled. So uh, a lot of my stuff now is just foam filled because I want it to last and I want it to be displayed and I want you guys to love it. Uh, so anyway, uh, this one is foam filled. And the way that these start um, is with uh, two, actually, and a half, two and a half molds. So we have the skull, which is this jawbone piece and this upper palette that I use uh, a lot. It's the same mask that uh, is over there peeking over Jerry's shoulder. That's a Skeletor. Same skull mask, and it's one of these guys right here, skull mask. Um, and that's what this is. And... Um, it's literally, this is literally a mask wearing a mask. So uh, the skull part is the jaw and the upper palate. The rest of this mask is actually one of my Fright Night Amy blanks from, you know, literally here up. It's, well, it's more than that because it's the ears and the, and the neck and that stuff, but it's not an Amy. Um, so since this mold is still producing um, blanks in a, a really nice way, um, this is a really good way to make unique one-off pieces that aren't Amy. Uh, I've done it both with, with also with the Michaels. I've done it with my Jerry's. Um, and they really turn out awesome because, in my opinion, uh, and this isn't a, a, a slam on zombie masks uh, that anybody else is doing because um, there's some really great stuff out there. But I like to see, and this really is kind of specific to this kind of thing, but I like to see the depth here. And it's very difficult to sculpt 
uh, depth and avoid to be able to avoid undercuts. And so what this allows is the sort of the kit bashing of these two blanks. It allows me to create this sort of tendony, muscly um, look, and uh, it just creates a, a sense of depth. And, you know, like I say, this is a tribute to a Be Something Studios mask, which was a, a molded mask. So they weren't able to get this level of depth to it. But uh, they did a fantastic and an amazing job of like literally searing that image into my brain of this sort of like beautiful woman that, you know, is disgusting below the veil. Like she was sort of like this belly dancer. And uh, anyway, that's what I got going on here. Now, I did talk about this being two and a half molds. <laughs> so we've got the skull. We've got the Amy. And we also have my Ed Wolf tongue. And I like the idea that she's biting her own tongue in half. So I put a, 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 a split it and then I put a piece of gross meat in there. And uh, I will go back and I'll paint this tongue. Now, one of the things about the tongue that I do is this tongue is uh, latex mixed with flocking. And what's cool about that is it sort of gives you a nice... Um, ruddy look to it already you can see see I did the flocking first and then when I just filled the mold I just did regular latex but uh, it gives you a nice sort of just sort of uh, speckled gross um, look and then you just wash it with a little bit of color just to get that plaster dust off and all of that stuff now I will go back with a coating of um, Gorilla Glue this stuff not the five minute epoxy mixed with uh, cardinal flocking I bought this flocking uh, on Amazon, and it was I. You know, it's a giant bag. This is going to last me forever. I, I like. I literally will never have to buy another bag of flocking, which is great. I'm not complaining. But I mix it with latex. I mix it with glue. I do all kinds of stuff with this stuff because what it does is it breaks up the color, uh, and it suspends it in a way that gives you more depth. I, and I keep saying, using the word depth here, but that's the one thing that I like about this stuff is that we're looking into it, you know? And I think a lot of people um, uh, that do silicone stuff um, like about silicone is that there is a translucency, there is a depth, there is a suspension of color that is um, not just present on the surface of the thing. So I'm always looking for ways to make um, a more interesting, uh, more realistic, a more um, translucent look to this stuff. Uh, I probably should just use silicone, quite frankly, because I'm constantly chasing that look with latex. But uh, anyway, here you go. There's your tongue. Uh, these teeth are Amazon teeth. If you didn't know, you can buy these teeth really, really inexpensively on Amazon. So when you're doing your sculpture, uh, you can put, well, these aren't those teeth, but you can y use teeth in your sculpture and that will give you um, sockets to put the teeth in uh, when you're done. And you can, you know, you can create, say like t teeth don't necessarily sit uh, perfectly. You know, you can m put one back and one forward and just kind of create these kind of character things that make it really feel natural and real and that kind of stuff. So anyway, uh, long story short, this is where I am on this one right now. I'm getting ready to mix up some uh, five minute glue, or not five minute, <laughs> Gorilla Glue, this stuff right here. Gorilla Glue, clear. This is the, this is the stuff with some, uh, with some uh, epoxy dye and some of that flocking. And I'm gonna start working on shifting the colors of uh, this latex here. Now, some of this latex, I mixed with flocking as I was kind of like latexing stuff in. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create that glossy gore, that disgusting, gross look. Uh, and then after that, I probably will do a pass with perma blood, uh, which is fantastic if you don't use perma blood for glossy, flexible, perfect blood. Literally every single time. I can't think of a time I've used Parma Blood and gone, man, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> uh, you should look into it. Uh, Pale Night Productions. 
look them up. Uh, anyway, they're, they're Kip Polly is the guy. He, we're friends on Facebook. I don't know him, but other than on Facebook, but his product is fantastic. So anyway, there you go. Uh, and uh, I'm working on her makeup and her paint job and all of that stuff. As you can see, I've got a, a natural paint job going on with a little bit of makeup going on. I got that eyeliner and I got a little bit of that like shimmery uh, makeup look that my daughter does that I don't understand <laughs> going on right now. So anyway, there it is. Uh, time to add a little bit of blood and some gore. Uh, Amazon delivered me some eyebrows and some hair for this uh, beautiful lady. And uh, then I'm going to order uh, the veil and some sort of like headdress like I did on the other one. Maybe make it slightly different. So each one of these is really unique. But um, yeah, there she is. Screen queen number two. Working on this uh, very hot L.A. Sunday afternoon. Hope everybody's having a good day. Talk to you soon.